Okay, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Yeah, first of all, hi. Uh, my name is Zach Weddington, and um, I'm going to assume you haven't heard of my film. Well, I'm making a film all about the Amiga computer. Uh, it's called Viva Amiga, and I pitch it as the history of one of the most awesome computers ever to hit the market. But more than that, it's actually a story about people. It's a story about what it was like to discover this amazing computer, what you could do with it, how it changed people's life, and uh, what it was like to have to say goodbye to the Amiga. And as we all know, there's a few people who refuse to say goodbye to the Amiga, and they're in the film too. And I kind of count myself as one of them. Um, it's actually a movie uh, with a lot of cool whiz-bang, tells you what the Amiga done, it's very visual. Um, it's also a story about how the identity that we, uh, the uh, technology that we, we choose to use says a lot about us and how our identities actually kind of get wrapped up in the uh, digital tools that we choose to surround ourselves with. Um, one great thing about vintage computer fans is they are really patient, so I want to say thanks everyone for your patience while I've been going through a really long process. Um, this is a total do-it-yourself effort with the film. Um, it's really just a handful of people doing it. It's not a studio. Although, I think when you see the film, you'll probably think that it does look like a studio. It just so happens that I work in film and television and is able to give the film a really professional look. But that's the reason it's been, it's been taking a while because uh, I've, had to, I've had to do a lot of it all myself. Um, see, it's been about, yeah, sometimes when I think about how long it's been, I get a little upset, but then I, I look at the IMDB and most people that make documentaries, it takes them about five years to make one. It's a very, very time-consuming process. It's only been two and a half years since we launched our Kickstarter, and I'm here to say that we'll be wrapping up the film this fall. Um, all my editing will be complete, all the graphics will be in, and then we're gonna send it to the color correcting and sound mixing people to get it looking as pretty as possible. A um, Couple quick thanks. I do wanna say thanks to BCF and Evan because um, you guys gave me the first platform where I could uh, you know, promote the film, talk about it, and generate some interest. And uh, w without you guys, it wouldn't have been possible. Um, huge thanks to Mike Lee, who has been my technical go-to guy. He's helped me out with um, storage space. We're working on a server for the rendering of the final graphics. Um, of course, Evan, Dave Haney, obviously he's in the film, Bill Hurd, uh, my fiance, Randy. And there's lots of people who aren't here that I'm not gonna thank right now, but um, believe me, I'll be thanking you later. Um, it's been a pretty awesome adventure with this film. It's taken me all across the country. Of course, I've been to Silicon Valley and um, I've been to San Francisco and uh, we traveled across Europe with my friend Marvin Drogsma. He's a Dutch guy that carted me all around where we, we covered um, the demo scene in Germany and uh, we covered some uh, Amiga festivals in Holland. Uh, that's all in the film. Um, the film is really an international effort. We actually have, we've got an Australian chiptune musician who's well known on the scene. We've got uh, a British uh, 3D modeler who has come into the project about a couple month or two ago who is just gangbusters and helping me create all these objects that we need for the computer graphics which are a big part of the film. Um, Dutch animators, I don't know, you name it. All of the, all of the you know, usual gang of Amiga freaks. Uh, every, anybody knows about the Amiga, they know that it was really uh, popular in Europe and so I'm doing my best to represent the European side of it. Not really gonna see that today, it comes later <laughs> in the film. Um, and then I wanna say, the best thing about, and I'm gonna stop here. Actually, I'm gonna say that because we're gonna have to have stuff to talk about in between and burning through. I gotta tell you what I'm gonna show today. I'm gonna show four videos. The first video I'm gonna show is called The Glory Days. And this currently comes in at chapter five in the film. And what, you, what you're gonna see is uh, this chapter captures the time when the Amiga had already been launched and uh, the Amiga was really, you know, really, really a hot item and people were talking about it, people were using it and discovering it. This chapter is pretty much what the film's gonna look like. It has, all, it has the visual polish minus, uh, we're gonna do some higher rendering quality on it, but you'll see it looks like a, it looks like a real film that you'd watch on TV. It's the most polished. The next two chapters I'm gonna show, they're not quite that polished, but I'm gonna explain how they're gonna look and so you'll get it. But I wanted to show them today because I think that you guys, you guys will be able to understand what's going on without the final cut. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. 
Why don't we show a video? Please bear with me. We have a less than ideal uh, setup here, so there may be some stops and starts. Is there any popcorn? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of Amiga stuff. <laughs> That was the glory days. What do you guys think? Yeah. Excited? Yeah. Hey, man. That's kind of how the whole film goes. The whole film goes. It's real upbeat. Some parts drop way down, get real emotional, <coughs> slow down the pace. But what really drives the film is the story, and I think what makes it really fun to watch is this really visual, fun, quirky. We've got great music. Uh, music pr uh, composed by my friend, uh, friend Ben Warfield. Um, uh, that was his track there on later. We've got we've got a really great soundtrack that's going to be coming out with it too. So okay. Next, I'm going to show you a chapter called State of the Market. Uh, this is this chapter is not really going to tell anybody here anything new at all, but the film assumes that you've never heard of the Amiga and maybe you don't have like a really strong grasp of technology. So we set a little context here. We talk about what the market for computer, personal computers was like when the Amiga came out so that you could appreciate how cool it, it actually was. Okay, like I said before, this chapter has no visuals in it. It's just content. You can follow it. It's going to look really jumpy. But when it's done, it's going to look like the last one. I'm sure you understand. But um, let me know what you think. I, th I think this kind of sets up a quick little scene of, of where we were at, you know, uh, in, in 1984. Um, so obviously we kind of rewound there. That, that comes before what I showed you first. Helps provide the context. Who, who was the one guy that wasn't R.J. Michael or anybody else? Who was that other? Jason? No, no the last guy. Oh, he's I. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting that game. He was he was a part of the original uh, team. He was a marketing guy, their first marketing guy. Okay. Uh, his, his name escapes me, but yeah, he actually gave a pretty good interview. Um, we got a, a few of his bikes in there, yeah. Um, so okay. Next, ah, broken dreams. Anybody that knows about the Amiga knows that there's a lot of heartbreak involved with the story of the Amiga. And uh, Broken Dreams, I think, kind of speaks for itself. This, well, these guys actually tell the story so well that I really don't even need to set it up. But this, this Broken Dream comes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list the chapters out for you. We got the intro, we got the credits, State of the Market, which I just showed you, the launch with Andy Warhol and all that stuff, the glory days, then we actually rewind to the development where RJ and, and company talk about what it was like when they developed it out in California originally. Then we move into the Amiga community, Amiga community user-generated media, Amiga community games, Broken Dreams Part 1, Never Say Die, Broken Dreams Part 2, Our Tech, Ourselves, Amiga Today, and Swan Song. And all that comes out to be about 80-some, 90 minutes. That's going to be the final link. But uh, yeah, going to get a little downbeat here and talk about what it was, what it was like to have some fears. Broken Dreams, ladies and gentlemen, that, that's actually a merger of Broken Dreams 1 and 2. There's a, there's a real upbeat part that actually comes in between all that, so, um, yeah. What am I at, 11, 26? Uh, what else I have to say about this? So say, yeah, uh, I think I think the best thing about this documentary is that it's really not only for Amiga and Commodore fans and retro computer fans. It's going to be a, a film for anybody that likes to watch documentaries. So you can think that audience is, is, is pretty big. And um, the more that we finish this film, uh, the bigger that I think it's going to be. There was a time when I thought this will never show in any theater anywhere, but we're starting to think that it might. And um, we definitely see it in film festivals. We definitely see it on cable television. Of course, we see it on things like Netflix, Amazon, whatever. And um, just stay in the loop. We're going to keep people updated after we're done, you know, on the status of when they can get a hold of a copy. And of course, the Kickstarter people will get their DVDs first. Um, Where do we want to go for that information? 
Um, we, yeah, we, we've got yeah, we've got amigafilm.com. Right. Yeah, amigafilm.com, and then there's Aviva Amiga Facebook, and um, yeah, those are pretty pretty good. You know, updated fairly. Uh, most of the action happens on Facebook. If you wouldn't mind, you can friend us on there instead of a like, and it actually it shows up as a friend. And you get a lot of updates. I mean, if you're into Amiga stuff, you got to be on the Viva Amiga Facebook page because anybody, I mean, Nolan Bushnell friended me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. There is a lot of interesting people on the, I mean, it's uh, up to a couple thousand now. I mean, it's full of inventors, artists, all kinds of freaks. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, we, when we get ready to launch this thing, we've, got, we've already got a whole network in place to get the message out about it. The, the whole film has been making itself this is probably going to be the most successful project that I'm ever involved with. I'm willing to accept that now because uh, <laughs> the film is really coming out great. Um, okay, this last thing is just for you guys. This is kind of like just a little, um, it's, it's not really well edited, just kind of a little overview of some of the stuff that we shot uh, over in, uh, in Holland. And uh, you get a peek at, um, this was a <laughs> basic, it was pretty cool. They, 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 uh, they set up a, I like a, a Viva Amiga, you know, just old school, you know, like get together and show demos party. And uh, we had a special guest show up out of the blue, unbeknownst to me, and I was pretty amazed. there um, that a lot of that stuff's gonna go in the chapter called uh, Amiga today which shows you all the ways that people are still using Amigas and even I'm sure as a lot of you know still making new Amigas quote unquote yeah we get their store side of the story too um, I don't know we got anything else here that's pretty much it I mean I'm done early anybody have any questions I just mainly wanted to show, show clips. I'm not here to talk so much. So. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wait do you see Robert. He's awesome. He's in the film, too. <laughs> he does an amazing job. Of, you won't believe what this guy did. He brings home one of the last chapters. Uh, okay. I say take a break if there's no questions. Zach. Oh. Yes. Are you within budget? Uh, we yeah, we spent all the Kickstarter money. I'm oh. spending my own money at this point. Oh. But um, so it's okay. No. I've, I, I, I uh, you know, just another way that I say that the film is blessed. Um, I was actually able, uh, while I've been making this film, to uh, start my own little production company. And so I work for myself now, making twice as much money and spending half the time. So that's actually enabled me to save a nice amount of money and get this done. I, I used to work for Comcast uh, and their you know, video production department doing uh, corporate video work. And um, it, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, nights stuck there till one or 2 a.m. And the last thing I wanted to do was come home and edit some more. So uh, those days are over, and I'm able to work at my own, you know, own pace. And yeah, we're, we're gonna have no problem getting this thing out. I, I, I think it's gonna be a hot item. I think that we've already been approached by um, distribution companies in the U.S. and in the U.K. So can you send me one when you're done? A copy? Oh, yeah. You guys, you guys can have the raw footage. <laughs> There's lots and lots and lots of raw footage. We did over, I think, over 40 interviews. And, um, I mean, honestly, we think at this point we may even want to do like a Viva Amiga Part 2 just for the hardcore fans, where it's, you know, it's like, okay, we, you know, we have to talk about what the market was like in 1984. We can get into some of the more, you know, more real hardcore geek stuff. And, yeah, we've got enough footage for it. I say, why not? Even if it was only an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Did you actually get everyone you wanted? Was there anyone you couldn't track? Mm, uh, That's a couple people. I didn't get Kiki wow. yet. We were working on getting Kiki. Kiki Stockhammer was, um, if you saw that, you know, that crazy where the lady was doing this, this crazy yeah. stuff in front of the camera, multiple copies. She was um, the spokes, 
person for the video toaster. And um, she was kind of like a, a like a cult celebrity in her own right. She was, she was basically the face of... Uh, yeah, we really wanted to get her in the film, but even if we can, I, uh, I've got all Tim Jennison, Tim Jennison, the, the founder of New Tech. I've got all the footage from back in the day that we need of Kiki, including some stuff. And oh yeah, I, I, I don't want to... I hesitate to tell people, but I got to tell you guys, like... First of all, I don't know if you if you notice the guy with the, the white hair and the beard that maybe was in there for a clip. That's Tim Jennison. He's the founder of New Tech, inventor of the video toaster. He's in a film right now that's out in theaters called Tim's Vermeer. Tim Jennison is just one insane, crazy inventor, and he's actually in a documentary, the star of it, that's out in theaters right now, and it was produced by Penn & Teller. So we've got, we've got footage of Penn & Teller, and we've got... Um, you know, we've got uh, footage of like um, Tony Hawk and other Will Wheaton people that were really involved with New Tech and the video toaster. We're not putting that stuff in yet. The deal is, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to um, where is it? San Antonio. Yeah, I'm gonna go down to San Antonio where New Tech is 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 uh, located, and I'm gonna show Tim the film. You know, like as, as polished as I can, and then see what we can do about. I mean, we may get Penn and Teller in our film. Pardon? Todd Rundgren. Todd Rundgren, I know. I, I chased him. I contacted his PR people on this. Uh, you know, like, I'm nobody right now. And I, I, don't, I didn't really have anything to show at the time. But I think if I can show things like that first chapter you guys saw, I think there's a lot of people who want to talk to me. And I think if I showed Tim Jennison a good finished film, he, just want, he wants to kind of sign off on the new tech stuff. And he said, hey, I'm not going to say yes or no, but let's, let's talk when you're done. And we'll see about maybe you, you, you being able to get some of that you know, Penn & Teller stuff in, which I think would be great. Because they they were huge fans of the video toaster, which you know. Oh yeah, get in, yeah, and that's sellable too. Yeah. I know, the I know. We get yeah. a name attached. Yeah. That'd be so yeah. nice. Tim Jennison. I, mean, I can't believe it. Like, I mean, well, I mean, it'd be cool if you search him. You you probably come across Bibi and me get too, and he's. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'd love it. I'd love it with some real names. We hope. Yeah. The sky's the limit on the film. Anything can happen. So. Speak up. Oh, Zach, what is the name of your production company? It's called Rocksteady. Rocksteady Media Services. Rocksteadymediaservices.com. I've got cards if anybody <laughs> wants one. Need a video made about your new product that explains it? I'm your guy. <laughs> That's all I got if let's say anybody has any more questions. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hope you're excited as I am.